God's Revision Science A Collection of Statements of the Lord Genesis And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Great Gospel of John, Volume 9, Chapter 83 About the Tree of Life and the Tree of Knowledge I, the Lord, said, Firstly, the truth will remain one and the same, even without signs, and whoever will live and act accordingly will become deeply inside aware that my teaching is divine and not a human word. Secondly, those who will transmit my teaching about the kingdom of God in man to others, and who will not only be teachers, but who they themselves will also do my will that is clearly contained in my teaching, will also be capable to perform signs in my name, and even greater signs than I am performing myself. But as mere teachers and not as men who apply my teaching themselves, they will not be able to perform signs, because the power to perform signs does not come from the reason, but from the living faith and the firm will to act. Because the reason of the brains is a dead worldly light of man and can never penetrate into the most inner regions of life of the spirit and its power. And the living faith in the heart is the true light of life of the soul that awakens the spirit in him and takes care that it will penetrate into the whole person. And once man is permeated of the spirit, then he is also permeated of its all-capable power. And whatever the living spirit wants, which forms then one being with the soul, happens, and the will is then already an accomplished work. Therefore, it is also stated in the scripture that God put two trees in the garden of life, a tree of life and a tree of knowledge, and said to man, If you will only eat the fruits of the tree of life, you will live. But if you also will eat the fruits of the tree of knowledge before it will be blessed by me for you, then death will come over you and you will die. But man, since he had a completely free will, let himself be seduced by the snake of his lust and ate of the tree of knowledge even before it was blessed by the ripeness of the faith in the heart of man. That means he searched and tried to grasp the spirit of God and so also the spirit of life with his natural reason. The result of it was that by that he only withdrew himself more and more from God instead of drawing more and more close to him. And that was already death. That means the spiritual death of man, and the whole man became powerless and lost the authority over all things in the natural world and was forced to work for and to acquire his feeding bread with the help of the weak glowing of his brain's reason in the sweat of his face, physically and even more so spiritually. And look, until now, men withdrew so far away from God, and thus also from the true inner life, that they now believe almost no more in a God, and thus also not in a continuance of life of the soul after the body has fallen away. And those who still believe mechanically in a god, or through a blind superstition in many gods, just like the heathens, imagine God or the gods to be so endlessly far away from them, that finally it seems impossible to them that a human being could ever come close to the god of whom they believe that he is so endlessly far away from him. And now that God himself has physically come to men in all the fullness of his eternal mind and power, and with all his love and wisdom. They do not see that, and in their great blindness and foolishness they consider this as impossible, while nevertheless with God all things are possible. And because he reveals himself now with a physical mouth and not with lightning and thunder, 
They consider God himself now as a blasphemer and a malicious agitator of the people against God and against the kings of the world who consider themselves to be gods and who also let themselves be honored as such by men. And look, all this is the result of the fact that all men prefer to eat the dead fruit of the tree of knowledge instead of the living and life-giving fruit of the tree of life. Chapter 84 Adam, where are you? An important question. The question that God asked Adam when he already ate the forbidden fruit, that sounded like this. Adam, or man, where are you? Still continues and will still continue until the end of this world, as long as there are people who prefer to eat from the tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life. Because the person who eats from the tree of knowledge will very soon lose God, himself, and his inner life, and he does not know anymore who he is, why he exists, and what he should be. Then his soul is full of fright and fear, and to his question, Man, where are you? He seeks the answer that would give him rest and comfort in the reason of the brains of his body. But then always the comfortless answer comes. You are in the judgment, which is the real death of the soul. Acquire your bread in the sweat of your face. What can the soul actually find in the brains? Nothing else except images of this world that are in the reason, and those images are all much further away from what is of the spirit and life than the soul himself. If the soul doesn't recognize the spirit of the life from God, which is always nearest to him, then how will he recognize in the brains of his physical head the spirit of the life from God, which is in the images of the world often endlessly much further away from him? Out of this complete error results inevitably and automatically the still greater error that the soul imagines the being of God to be ever further away and unreachable. And this as long as he will totally get rid of it, and after that will turn to epicurism or cynicism. And this condition in which most of the priests of all kinds are now, and now especially the Pharisees, the elders and scribes, and the princes and kings, together with their great following, the soul does not know the truth anymore. The lie is worth as much to him, and even more than the purest truth, as long as through that he can get some earthly advantage. If one or the other truth would hinder him, then he will become hostile against it, and will run away from it, or will persecute it with fire and sword. When the soul is in such a condition, sin does no more exist for him, and a person who can possess some worldly power can do whatever pleases him, and whatever will flatter his senses. And woe to the righteous one, or someone who lives in the truth of life, who would go to such a mighty one, and would say to him, Why are you an enemy of the truth, and why do you commit the greatest injustice that is crying to heaven among the people, who are on this earth no less than you, blind fool? Just look around you into the world, now whether this is not the case everywhere. And what is the reason of that? I say to you, nothing else except the ever-increasing eating from the tree of knowledge. I have come now myself physically into this world to the people who turn too far away from the true goal of life and ask them once again, Adam, where are you? And no one knows what to answer me as to where or who he is. And I am showing them now again the tree of life and urge them to take from its fruits and to satiate themselves with them. Truly I say to you, whoever will eat from the tree of life will also come to the true life of the spirit out of me, and he will never again be hungry or desire to eat from the tree of death. Because once someone is in the life of the spirit out of me, will also be in all its wisdom, and only then will the tree of knowledge be blessed through that, and the soul will know in one moment more than if he would investigate for one thousand years with its outer and vain reason. When you will be in the condition of the true life, you will also perform signs in my name, and in this manner you will be able to give everyone a testimony of the truth of my teaching, if that will be necessary. Did you, scribe and friend, understand this well now?
Trumpet Call of God, March 6, 2005 Watch O peoples of the earth, hear the word of the Lord your God. You are lost, drowning in a deep sea of transgression, sinking in the ever-shifting sands of religion and science. You are stuck in the mire of your iniquities, slowly suffocating, as the fruits of your labor will come full circle to take away your life. For by your own works you have destroyed the garden, on account of your greed, and have caused much suffering and death, bringing calamity upon your own heads. Thus, because of your great iniquity, I have drawn back my hand, and for the multitude of your transgressions has the judgment of God come upon you. Dead generation, foolish children, evil surrounds you on every side. The darkness closes in, yet you are unmoved. Detestable birds gather and predators come forth to stalk you as prey, yet you see no cause for alarm. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord, surely my flock has become a prey, and my children have made themselves meat for the slaughter. For the peoples of the earth have forsaken me, days without end. They have altogether gone astray. My created ones have removed themselves far from me, and my own beloved have not returned to me, but do always seek their own way. And of the shepherds, they did not go out to search for my flock, but have fed themselves. They did not feed my flock, but have fed themselves. The Third Testament, Chapter 50, Vanity of Knowledge the Lord. I ask the men of this time, who consider themselves to be the most advanced in history of the world, have you not found, with all your talent, a way to make peace, to achieve power and obtain wealth that does not mean killing, destroying or enslaving your fellow men? Do you believe that your advancement is true and real when, morally, you are dragging yourselves through the mud and spiritually wandering in shadows? I do not fight with science, since I inspired it in man. What I censure is the purpose to which you sometimes put it. Do not become vain with the fruits of your science, for now, while so much progress has been made through it, is when humanity suffers most, when there is more misery, unrest, illness and destructive wars. Man still has not discovered the true science, that which is gained through the path of love. The same applies to science. Love God above everything and your neighbor as yourself. Again, did you, scribe and friend, understand this well now?